Okay, so we're out behind our warehouse here where we fabricate and produce our ice melt systems, our gutter guard, and other sheet metal products. And what we're doing today is we're doing some comparison testing, not only of the different heat cables, uh, some of them that are available, but uh, also a little bit of comparison versus other systems that are on the market. And we know you have a choice. There are choices out there. You can just go with zigzag cables on the roof, and there are choices with all sorts of different ideas as far as panel systems as well. But what we hope to show you today here is that we test our products and we make sure that they work and they hit certain standards. And so what we're going to look at first of all is our three wattage options for the new heat self-regulating heat cables that we embed in our systems. And so what we've got here in the center is our 8 watt cable, we've got our 13 watt cable and our 15 watt cable. And what we're going to see here is, those are just basically names. The, the way that heat cables are tested is, they've got these ice baths and they dump the heat cables inside these ice baths that are super cooled, and they see how much wattage they can extract out of it. Now that's great for testing and that's really consistent, but that's not real world. And so what we're hoping to imitate here is, as, as close to real world uh, simulation that we can, but still keep it concise, as far as what we're testing in the parameters here. So we've embedded the heat cables in the extrusions. They're never in, in an ice water bath. They're in our extrusions, they're in the gutter bottom, and so they're always just basically faced with contact with aluminum and contact with the open air. So that's what we've simulated here. And so we want to just show you, first of all, amp draw, and give you an idea of that. And amp draw is basically just how much electricity that section of cable is using and that's going to, you're going to see the differences there versus the, the wattage of the heat cable. So the higher the wattage of the heat cable, the higher the amp draw should be. So what we'll start out with, first of all here, is our, our 8 watt cable. And we've got our amp meter right here. So our 8 watt cable is, it's drawing about 1.1 amps, and that's for a 20, uh, 20 foot section of cable, about 19 and a half feet. And that's about what we should see out of that. When we do Ohm's Law, we see it's not actually drawing 8 watts per foot. But again, it's not in the, an ice bath of super cooled water. It's in an aluminum extrusion. So by comparison, what we've done is we've set up another manufacturer's heat cable over here. And we embedded it not only in our system, our extrusion, but also in their extrusion as well. And, and we'll see some of the limitations of of the way that they do things in a moment. We've got a shorter piece there, but if we just want to do comparison, this is what they call their 12 watt cable. Now when we do an amp draw on it, we've got 1.13. Well, our 8 watt cable was drawing 1.1, so basically, although they call it a 12 watt cable, it's not performing like a 12 watt cable. By comparison, and it's the same length of cable, so it's not like we're, we're, we're fudging the numbers. Same extrusion, same length of cable. So by comparison, New Heat's 13 watt cable is 1.72. So you can see a, a great increase. So it, it, it truly is a, a, a step up in, in, uh, in the amp draw and the wattage output as well. So the other manufacturer, their 12 watt cable, just doesn't produce anything different than our 8 watt cable. So be aware when you do that. There's other systems on the market that rely on this cable as well. Not just not just the extrusion you see here and that type. Uh, there's two or three other systems that rely on this cable that, that calls itself a, a 12 watt cable, but it really in reality it doesn't produce anything different than our 8 watt cable. Now if we want to look too at our 15 watt cable, we see here again a step up over the 13 watt. It's drawing about 1.9 amps, and then if we go back to our 13 watt, it's about 1.75, 174, somewhere in that area. So those are real world measurements. Um, we're not saying anything's wrong with, with the way that heat cables are measured for their wattages. What we are trying to say is we look at it in the real world, where this cable is actually gonna be used and so the, the ice bath idea, while it may be very consistent because you get the same cooling all the way around it and it's a consistent draw on that cable, 
we're testing in real world applications. So now what we're also going to look at here is heat output and, and that's important as well and it's important on the surface of the panel because that's what's actually exposed to the elements and drawing heat and, and going to be melting the snow that's falling on it and keeping the, the water that's being melted higher up on the roof that normally would come to the roof edge and refreeze, it keeps that from freezing as well. And so that's really the important measurement here is heat output or the temperature of the panel on top of it. So we've got some, some covers here. These are typically what we use on our, our valley panels, whether we have the valley configuration or our, our eave panel configuration that you know we could put on there as well. Um, it would be riveted down and, and that's what we do. We rivet our covers to the base panel because that's the most effective transfer of heat. And we're going to get the same temperature regardless of what covers on here as long as it's got good contact. So let's start with our 15 watt cable and we'll just get an average here all the way across as we're measuring and we'll look kind of for highs and lows. And so what we're seeing here is a high temperature of about 64 degrees on there and a low of about 60 degrees. So we get a good consistent heat output. I should let you know that our, our temperatures right now are 20 degrees. It's kind of a little bit of filtered sunlight and uh, we've got a, maybe a 10 mile an hour breeze. So it is pulling some of the heat off here, but again, real world application. So that was our 15 uh, amp cable with the double run in the extrusion. Now we've got our 13 watt and as we're coming across here, we're getting, well, a high of about 60, 61 uh, on the uh, panel here. So uh, what we've always seen is there's, you know, between about a three and five uh, degree difference Fahrenheit between the two. So the 15 watt uh, puts out more heat, a little more amp draw to put that out, but it puts out more heat. Now let's look at our, our eight watt. And as we're scanning across, here what we're seeing is a max of about 51 degrees, uh, just somewhere in that area. So again, still great heat output, enough to keep things melted and flowing as the snow's falling on it. That's our 8 watt cable. Now, we, we're going to the 12 watt uh, by this other very popular manufacturer, very popular heat cable manufacturer, what they call a 12 watt cable. And again, as we come across the top of this, as we come across the top, we're seeing 51, 52 degrees right in that area. So not only the same amp draw as our 8 watt cable, but the same heat output as our 8 watt cable. So don't be confused all the time by the different uh, cables that are out there. Uh, we've done extensive testing on these. Not only have we tested these cables, but we've also done testing on a whole host of heat cables. And what we found is the naming on the cable really doesn't matter. It's, it's incumbent upon your ice dam prevention system, the manufacturer of that, to do the testing. Some of them claim eight or nine watts and actually at these temperatures are, are drawing 11 to 12 watts, way over what they're rated for. So they're actually burning a lot hotter. There's no consistency there. What we found with the new heat cables is incredible consistency all the way along in that. Now, what we've set up over here it's a shorter run, but we're just going to look at this as far as surface temperature. And so we're going to take that surface temperature on this panel. And what we've seen all the way along is consistently, we're only getting about 37 to 39 degrees on top of that panel. Rather disappointing heat output on that. And again, that's with this 12 watt cable. Uh, in another video, we're going to show you why that is. There's not a lot of good contact between the heat cable and the extrusion. And then the way the extrusion is designed, it creates dead air spaces. And that means inefficient heat transfer. Now, you'll see in the, the next video that we show you on this subject, uh, first of all, you can see how loose that is. There's about two thousandths, I'm sorry, twenty thousandths of an inch uh, gap in there, so that means not good heat transfer on that. They also have a, we sawed it off just so there was good, you know, a good consistency here, but they had a, a place for a third channel. 
And so this, this particular manufacturer requires three runs, but it actually doesn't do all that well as far as heat output. Uh, so you're using a lot of electricity and not getting a lot of bang for your buck. Whereas in our systems, we have the same extrusion, it's incredibly efficient, and we don't require all these extra cables. We just step up the actual wattage, and, and it's a, a true wattage. So I, I hope that's been helpful. My name is Greg Bublitz. Uh, I'm the owner of Versus Screen Gutter Protection. I'm in, intimately involved in the design and testing of all of our systems, uh, whether it's our, our EMS Ice Blaster EMS system, or we have our Versus Screen Ice Blaster heated gutter guard systems as well. Uh, we do the testing. We look at uh, what we've got and we run them through real world testing so that you can be confident that what you're getting is going to meet those standards. So I thank you for, uh, for your consideration on our products.